Welcome to another tutorial by Saul from the web.com. This tutorial is going to cover the basics of the store configuration. Uh, so if you haven't already done so, go ahead and log into the administrative end of your shopping cart and navigate to configuration and select my store. Uh, so there's a lot of values, a lot of things going on. Okay, so there's a lot of values and a lot of different things going on uh, here under the configuration menu. And we're not going to touch on all of them because depending on how your store is set up, most of this stuff is going to be set up for you already and you probably won't need to or even want to change a lot of the settings in here. So what we're going to do is basically just go over what some of these uh, values are and if you, you know, if you do need to change them later on, uh, at least you know where to go and find certain things that you might need to change. So the first thing we're going to look at is the My Store. Um, and this is basic information about your store. Um, and you probably won't need to change this unless you move your store, your location, uh, your physical location, or the change the name of your store. So for starters, there's your store name, top line, pretty self-explanatory. Store owner, this is the name that's going to be on emails that you send to clients. Uh, so you, you can put y either your name or you can just repeat the store name here if you want the emails to have the name of the store rather than your personal name. Uh, the store logo, this is the file that is attached uh, to the store uh, on invoices and uh, certain emails that are sent out to your clients. This file, this image is located in the cat under the catalog uh, and forward slash images folder if you're using FTP. Uh, it's right in the catalog folder. Uh, there are two main folders for images. One is under the catalog folder and one is under the the template folder for the design of your uh, web uh, website. But this is actually under the main images folder right under the catalog. Uh, here is the email address that will uh, be used for your store. So when someone uses your contact us form, and sends you a message via the contact us form. This is the email that it will be sent to, whatever you put in here. If you respond to an email uh, or send an email out from your shopping cart, uh, this is the the name that's going to be put in the from field of the email. So this can usually be, you can change this to like contact us or orders. Uh, and then you can put in brackets here the actual email you want them to respond to. And then the rest of this is uh, this is pretty much self-explanatory. The the country where you're doing business, the state you're doing business. The uh, don't worry so much about the expected sort order or sort field or default languages. Uh, these are all going to be set up for you, and you probably don't want to change any of this. Um, here, right here, the send extra order emails to. This is uh, if you have your store set up to capture order information, and then you're processing uh, on your own manually the credit card information, uh, you might want to actually send yourself a, a complete copy of the order so that you know when an order is placed and you'll also, in another part of this, uh, these tutorials I'll explain, where you send, uh, split up the credit card information. So you'll be getting two emails for each order that you, uh, that is processed on your website. But basically, this, what, what, whatever you put here is where an extra copy of the orders that are placed on your website is going to go. Um, this is for the, uh, the the tell a friend module. If you have that turned on, you can set this to true. And this way, when someone's looking at your products, they can uh, send an email to their friend about the product. But just uh, bear in mind that they would have to log in and uh, before they can send an email. So don't know if you want to do that. It's kind of distracting when your goal is to really just to sell online. You don't really want to distract your customers too much. Uh, here's the address that you for your store you can put in here and this is uh, going to be on the invoices that you send out to your clients also uh, pretty much everything else that you need to know uh, is under a different menu you really don't need to know what's going on here most of this stuff is going to be set up for you and it's it's all you know depends on how your store is configured so rather than go through that in the tutorial you might want to just contact us um, if you need information regarding uh, some of the, the values that are down here, like, for instance, for the gift vouchers and so on. Um, we'll move on to minimum values. Minimum values is basically the 
deals ma- mainly with like the contact form. Uh, it's basically the uh, character value that you want to set as a minimum for information you're collecting from your client. So for instance, first name, uh, the person that's on your website cannot put less than two letters for their name. So for instance, um, Ed would have to put ED, and that's the minimum value he can put in. If he just put E, it wouldn't work, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, you know, first name, last name, date of birth, email address. These are the minimum value of characters accepted for any of these fields uh, that are asked for. Maximum values is actually completely different. Maximum values is basically uh, deals with products and the display of products. So, for instance, um, search results. Having search results set to 10 means that when someone searches for an item, 10 items are displayed per screen. And then if there are more items, you'll have a menu, you know, page 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on and so forth. So basically, this is uh, this is the amount of products you see on the site based on what the, uh, the customer is searching for. So if you have a featured product set up and they click on the featured products link, you know, same difference, they'll get 10 items displayed um, and basically that's uh, pretty much how all of these values here uh, work they all pertain to the the display of products and well for for here the manufacturers area that that uh, pertains to the list of manufacturer names for your website if you if you have manufacturers so we move on from there quickly touch on the images images you can you can have one image size for your products, and we went over this in the products. If you haven't seen the products, uh, upload and products tutorial, uh, we reference this area here in that tutorial. Basically, if you have one image, one large image, say about 500 by 500 pixels, um, you can use that same image for, the, for each product throughout the shopping cart. And what this does here is it resizes the image based on where it's being displayed. So for instance, the medium image, you can set the the height to 175 and it'll scale appropriately, the 500 by 500 image, it'll scale it down to 175 by 175. And for the small image, it will scale it down to 150. Uh, for the additional images, um, we have that set to be scaled to 75. Now, notice that we've only changed the height for these uh, image sizes. And that's because um, for scaling issues like for instance if the if the image was not 500 by 500 if it was not a perfect square if it was something more like 650 by 480 uh, or something like that and you and you put values in for both width and height then what you'd probably get is either a, a highly compressed or a highly stretched image depending on whether your image is oriented vertically or horizontally so what we do is by putting in just a height, we have the images match up evenly. Uh, that's the first th- thing. They, they match up if you scale, if you go from one end of the screen to the next, they're going to match up. They w- one won't be longer and another shorter and another longer. They'll all match up by height. And then it's just a, they're going to vary by width based on the scale of the image. Um, and that's pretty much all you would need to to change here if you want to make some images larger or smaller just change either the height or the width whichever you have it set to most of the time height for appearance issue for appearance 